The question that we've got, the full question, is here up on the screen. Why is the COSO the most popular ERM standard when it focuses on the adverse effect of risk management? The question is really a two-part question. The first part focuses on COSO's popularity. The second part with a perceived adverse focus on risk management. I'm going to handle the first part now and the second part a little later. COSO's Enterprise Risk Management Integrated Framework is considered the most popular structure being implemented in the United States. The definition of ERM offered by COSO is purposely broad and is geared to achieving the entity's risk management objectives in four categories, if you remember from the CUBE diagram. Strategic, Operational, Reporting and Compliance. While discussing various techniques for assessing risk, the methods are more qualitative than quantitative in nature from an actuarial point of view. The definition itself reads, and we've got it here up on the screen, ERM is a process affected by an entity's board of directors, management and personnel applied in strategy setting and across the enterprise designed to identify potential events that may affect the entity and manage risks to be within its risk appetite to provide reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of entity objectives. So why is COSO so popular? First, let's consider COSO's mission. It is, and here it, we've got it up on the screen again, to provide thought leadership through the development of comprehensive frameworks and guidance on enterprise risk management, internal control and for fraud deterrence designed to improve organizational performance and governance and to reduce the extent of fraud in organizations. Secondly, remember that COSO is a joint initiative of five separate sponsoring organizations. The actual organizations are one, the American Accounting Association, the AAA. Two, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, that's the AICPA. Three, the Financial Executives International, or the FEI. Four, the Institute of Management Accountants, or the IMA. And the last one, the fifth one, is the Institute of Internal Auditors, or the IIA. These five pretty much take in the entire accounting and auditing profession in the United States. So you can see the reason for the popularity. Now COSO was first published in 1992, which is way over 20 years ago. It gained wide acceptance following the financial control failures of the early 2000s. Anyone remember Enron? Today, this makes it the most widely used framework in the US, as well as being widely used around the world. So now let's have a closer look at the second part of the question, specifically the words when it focuses on the adverse effect of risk management.
in the course material I do say that COSO ERM does not cover exploiting risks because COSO defines a risk as a negative outcome. In other words, risk can have a positive effect. This is referred to as exploiting the risk. If the risk impact relates to opportunities where the company has a competitive advantage or some other capability to create value, the company may look to take on more of the risk to exploit this advantage. Exploiting the risk is, to coin a phrase, an extremely risky business. It's more akin to gambling than to actually managing the risk.